but we are live. Welcome back, Lab Code Nation. We are, I am joined today with a co host, which I'm uh, don't always get to do, so I'm excited for this. My main man, Johnny Mo. We have been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't we, my friend? We have, and it's always excellent conversation. Uh, 100%. And we are joined today by somebody who's like 30 million times smarter than either one of us. Yes, sir. And we are going to talk about. SEO for Google, search engine optimization, AKA get your brand to the top of Google. But we're gonna also go down another rabbit hole because Johnny knows damn well I'm gonna talk about this. This man right here has specialized in one industry and is, is recently, I don't know how recent, where he's gonna tell us, uh, into pretty much every industry uh, for his SEO work, all because of TikTok. That's right. And I'm excited to uh, hear about it. Austin Armstrong with Socialty Pro. Welcome, my friend. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for having me here. It's, a, it's an honor, and I think we're going to get into some great stuff today. Yes, sir. I think we will be. So, brother, tell us, where are you coming from? Who are you? What do you do? Well, how, did, how did you come up in the business? Give it to us. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Austin Armstrong with Socialty Pro. I run a full-service digital marketing agency. Um, my background in digital marketing really started, uh, I won't go too far back, but it started on MySpace uh, of all platforms. So OG social media marketing, basically as far back as you possibly can get. Uh, I got bit by the bug and uh, really just never stopped. So I started working with uh, other agencies, you know, starting the intern route, um, becoming, you know, starting as an unpaid intern, paid intern, part-time, full-time manager, uh, I've been uh, CEO and co-founder now of, of Socialty Pro for coming on to uh, getting close to two years now. Um, for the first time in my life, I'm completely self-employed uh, as of about six months ago, which is the coolest thing in the world. And, um, you know, we work in a lot of different industries. Our, our background really started in the behavioral health space. Uh, but thanks to the, the success of, of TikTok and a lot of word of mouth marketing as well, Things have been blowing up and all things considered with how crazy the state of the world is, I am truly blessed with how our business has been booming the last couple of months. Love to hear Good. it, man. Okay. Have you seen a big increase in intake since the fog has rolled upon us? Um, what have you seen there for trends? Because I, I do a, a video marketing thing that I talk about and the statistics come from Google and YouTube and they're just alarming. They're, and they're probably about eight months old, these statistics. So it's just curious to see what you've seen from uh, since the fog has come. Uh, has, we, ha has there been a, a big uptick and where has that uptick been? Yeah, I think there's been a, a, a lot of um, uptick over the last six mm -hmm. months pretty consistently. I, the people that are reaching out to me are the ones that are seizing the opportunity. You know, a lot of big businesses and a lot of individuals pump the brakes on everything because, you know, maybe their business took a hit or something like that. Uh, but the businesses that uh, didn't take that big of a hit or, you know, maybe are funded from various resources or something like that saw this pause as an opportunity to jump ahead of everybody else. This is much uh, what I did. You know, I took the opportunity to really jump all in onto an untapped platform like TikTok. Uh, and it and it worked. So uh, within just a couple months, you know, businesses started reaching out to me like crazy uh, around SEO. Uh, we can kind of get into some of the TikTok strategy stuff if you if you want. But uh, uh, I eventually, you know, I didn't even start talking about SEO originally. Talked about a, a lot of different digital marketing strategies. Uh, and what I noticed was that the SEO space really took off, and there was a huge interest in that subject matter. Uh, and a lot of interest in businesses wanting to start building this now. Uh, so that's, yeah, it's been great. Uh, it's awesome. seems to be as bad as I want to just go straight into TikTok, I can't because the topic today is yeah, really yeah. SEO. So yeah, let's, let's break, let's, let's, let's break it down. Let's, let's digress. And I, I think I, I, I don't want to assume everybody knows what, SEO means search engine optimization and how you can obtain it and how uh, it is such a powerful strategy. So why don't you just kind of break that down for us? And then let's, uh, I'd like to hear you uh, spin it over to real estate and, and how a real estate agent could be optimizing. Yeah. So if you break down that long phrase of search engine optimization and kind of 
flip it and reverse it, you're optimizing your website for search engines. So you're just creating content and optimizing your website and all of the pages on your website to be found by the people that are actually looking for you. So if you're not applying best practice SEO, you're doing a disservice to your uh, to yourself and the people that are trying to find you. People are trying to find the best resources online and it's an opportunity for you to show up in front of them and help them. Uh, as far as what could be done in, in the real estate space, a lot of what I like to do is reverse engineer what some of the top uh, players are doing. So you may be starting from scratch, uh, but you may be aware of some really top players in the real estate space that have been crushing it for years online. You can use free tools like uh, ubersuggest.io is a, is a great completely free website that you can put in a competitor's website you can see what keywords that they're ranking for and what pages are actually driving them the most amount of traffic. And then you can recreate those pages on your website, but do it better, you know, add in additional information, add in uh, videos, add in um, frequently asked questions, uh, focus on the searcher's intent. Uh, and you're going to siphon a lot of that traffic. Uh, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, you can, copy what a, a competitor has done and do it better. Nice. Get a question for you. <clears throat> Google owns YouTube, right? Google's number one, YouTube's number two um, for search engines. But how important is it <clears throat> in a video centric world, which we are because, well, Google and Facebook and everybody else tells us we are and the evidence is there 80 plus percent. So, how important is it video on your website to rank inside of Google and those videos at the same time, how important is it to have a solid Google presence to do anything in YouTube? Uh, great question. There's a, my mind goes a lot of different ways there. So one with <clears throat> being the second most popular search engine uh, in the world, just tapping into YouTube in and of itself is an opportunity. So not only just creating pages on your website around what your prospective clients are searching for online, but creating a video answering that content as well is going to help people that are using the YouTube platform as a search engine to also find you. Now they absolutely work synergistically too uh, for a lot of different reasons. So if you create a YouTube video, you want to, uh, in the description of that video, link to uh, an article or more information on your website. That's going to drive relevant traffic over to your website um, and you know, bring in more leads, essentially, too. Same goes for um, you know, vice versa, embedding a relevant video around the subject matter that your page helps uh, the overall ranking of that website. But there's another even more like technical SEO factor, and that is uh, time spent on site or uh, reducing uh, bounce rate. So video, having a video on your page on your website increases the time that they actually spend on your website. And that's a positive ranking factor for Google as well, because if somebody clicks onto your website from Google, you know, they type something in, they click on your website, or maybe it takes too long to load, or it's not the information they're looking for and they leave immediately. It's a high bounce rate. That's not what Google wants. Google wants to serve you as the searcher with the best resource. So increasing that time spent on site is a positive ranking factor. If you get somebody onto your page, you get them to engage with a, a video and watch a video. It's gonna increase that time on site. It can also drive a lot of traffic from SEO over to your YouTube channel. So you can synergistically grow both at the same time. What would you say is the best advice you would give to a realtor um, when it comes to developing a site? Because I think, and, and Johnny, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think that a lot of realtors just either A, don't have a website, or they take what's given to them by their broker, uh, mm -hmm. or it's just a site that, that is for listings, right? It's, it's the same thing. What, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who is either in that boat, has nothing, or says, I, yeah, you know what, what he just said is true. What I have is basically what everybody else has. How do I differentiate? How do I create something without spending thousands and thousands of dollars that can actually be effective and work for me and get me ranked and get me seen? 
Yeah, start, great question, by the way, Jeff. Uh, start with your most frequently asked questions and create educational content around all of them. Uh, every client that we work with, that's our, that's our onboarding process. You know, think of the top 25 or 50 questions that you get being uh, an expert real estate agent, an expert in anything that you do online. What are those questions? And then dissect that and create unique pieces of content around every single one of those questions. You want to create a blog article or a landing page around that type of content. You want to create a video for that content that you can, you know, dual purpose on, uh, that you can upload onto YouTube, onto Facebook, onto LinkedIn, if that's a part of your strategy as well. You might want to condense that into a short form 60 second video that you can also then upload onto TikTok and now the upcoming uh, YouTube shorts as well as even dual purpose it on Instagram reels as well. So maximize your time and effort, uh, be strategic about it. You can even batch a lot of this stuff out. So like take one day a month, you know, we're all busy. We all have lives. We all have stuff going on, families going on, et cetera. Take one day a, a month, you know, map up all of these questions, knock out as much of the stuff as you can, schedule it out, reap the rewards. I got a question for you because you touched on a couple of things there. Now, you frequently ask questions and stuff like that. I brought up video early. I'm going to bring up video again because it's that it's that prevalent in my world anyways. Mm -hmm. If you have a video, I know they do it on YouTube. They transcribe that video to extract the keywords and they have a library of it. Nobody can validate it, whatever. That's just a theory. But I've broken the theory a few times. If you have a video on your website that's not on like so let's take you got your five facts of frequently asked questions and you turn them into video does that because you can actually say more talking than you can typing and it actually it just looks better are those videos in fact being transcribed and spited in those words being housed in a library which are then used in seo or is that a myth uh Great question. So there's there's what's called a Google Cloud Vision uh, that you can you can uh, look at, into this a little bit. But Google's algorithm does definitely read um, the transcription, which is also why it's important to um, transcribe your videos using a service like Rev.com, which is incredibly cheap. It's like a dollar a minute or something mm -hmm. like that, because their algorithm uh, is not perfect. So you may see, uh, you may look at that transcript uh, or turn it on, and it may it may think that you said a, a an explicit curse word uh, or something like that, but you didn't, uh, and you can actually get flagged for that. So, uh, does it benefit you? It can. What one thing that I have done tested in the SEO space that has been very beneficial. And I'm glad you touched upon this actually, is using a service like, you know, there's a million out there, whatever you want to use to transcribe, but professionally transcribe those services. You can turn that video into a blog article and then you include your call to actions, you know, contact me if you need help, et cetera. And that blog article that's transcribed from the video will also be indexed onto Google. And we've gotten that's first page ranking brilliant. just from that. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea. I could see exactly how that would work from a dev side. You click on the blog, you click on the article. There's the video and the transcription. I could see absolutely. That. Does absolutely. it transcribe though? How, how accurate is the transcription from a from a grammatical standpoint? Uh, from does it does it matter? From from YouTube's auto algorithm. Yeah, it's not great. So it's just like Rev, very similar in that mm -hmm. regard. I use cap wing and I have to constantly go in there and change and capitalize and put a period and move that yeah. over. Plus I talk like I got marbles in my mouth. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I definitely think Rev and I, I'm not a, I have no affiliation with them. So <laughs> they're just the service that I use. Uh, but I, I found that they're more grammatically correct than just Google's or YouTube's automatic uh, uh, system. Yeah. I like Rev too. I, I recommend Rev as well. And I'm not getting paid by them either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy to hear what you just said because, you know, I have, some, cool. I have 20 people saying no and two people saying yes. And I believe the two people. Yeah, I've seen. So I, I go to a lot of like, conf well, you know, pre COVID, I went to a lot of conferences uh, in the YouTube space because I, I've been doing YouTube for like eight years uh, as well. I'm very, I love that space. Um, and all of those, those YouTube experts and gurus that are, that are on stage, nobody can agree on an absolute fact if getting a transcribed 
or upload manually uploading transcription um, into just English or even manually transcribing uh, in other languages actually impacts and helps your uh, your ranking for that video in the search results. It's it's completely inconclusive, and there's experts out there that have done hundreds of video tests. But you know, doing what uh, what I had just said is proven. Um, taking that transcription, turning it into a text-based blog article, also embedding that video on a landing page, definitely increases your visibility. Yeah. Where do so you recommend? Not... Good, go ahead, John. I was just gonna say, we've already hit on a couple of pretty key things. I hope everybody's listening, um, taking notes, and if you have to watch the replay, because we just hit on a couple of, of really important pieces. I, I agree, and and I wanna, I wanna, I wanna back up again, um, and if I missed your answer, Shame on me, but where would you recommend going? Just again, backing it down to the simplest, the simplest form of creating a website or mm -hmm. versus using what their broker gives them. Because I don't think that for most, if they use what their broker gives them, it's going to be very basic. Um, and so where do you, where do you guide someone? So let's just say they, they listen to this. They're like, Austin sold. Uh, I, I want, I need you in my life. I need your help. I want to do this. Where do I start? Like, well, how, how do I even, where do I create a website? Do you do that for them? Would you recommend services that they go to? Do they need to learn WordPress? Where do, they, where do you go? Yeah, so there's a lot of website builders out there and, and my team and I absolutely can help you build a website and grow it online if that's the route that you wanna take. And please kindly reach out to me if you'd like to. But if you are a, a type of person that really wants to get your feet wet and, and go about this from the easiest place, there's tons of um, website builders out there. WordPress, I highly, highly recommend. Uh, it's it's a little more advanced because you have to uh, get the hosting, you have to get the uh, the domain, you have to uh, either install a theme or understand and know coding on there. And there's a lot of different elements, and it's maybe not the most beginner friendly. But there's great website builders out there to to just get started, like Squarespace. Um, uh, and Wix, uh, just to you know, limit it down to as few options as possible. Uh, I'd probably recommend Squarespace first. Uh, I, I like that. Uh, I think it's a little easier. They have tons of great templates in there. And basically, you just sign up, and they take care of everything for you, the hosting, the domain. Uh, you can connect it to uh, G Suite and have um, uh, a professional email address right in there. And they give you all the tools to optimize and create blog articles and do everything very simply uh, right within the platform. There was something that I seen and I don't know, this might be it the other day, which I thought was comical. I just haven't had time to sign up for it. And you're able to take your Facebook page and turn it into a website with this service. I'm sure it's rather cheesy if you would, <laughs> but I think this might be it, uh, page vamp. I don't know. I save everything. But um, have you ever heard of anything like that? And I just want to parlay on what Jeff was saying, because some people may or may not know this stuff. I mean, I've been in the tech world since the 90s. So um, I've been around some pretty cool stuff. And when you get a site from well, most big templated people, my company included, it, it's a template. All the web traffic is going down to this one particular IP and then is being separate from there. So or separate, separated from there. So is there truth in that templated sites don't rank as well, even if you work hard at them? I think I broke that once in, in early 2000s, but it's a long time since. Um, do templated sites work as good as organically built sites on their own environment compared to a hosted environment as well in that mix? You know what I'm trying to say, hopefully. Yeah, um, they definitely can. It um, Google's goal. That's is, good to know. Yeah, Google's. You know, I might. Like, yeah, it's going to take work. Uh, one thing that you need to consider with templates is that, uh, particularly on on WordPress, is they can be a little heavier, uh, at, it, as far as page load speed, which is a ranking factor. So you know, there's different things that you can do to combat that and speed up the website. That's one potential pitfall of uh, of themed websites, uh, but you know we've we've built websites uh, on themes that are doing you know hundred thousand visitors per month. Um, you know how much how much more do you want? Uh, even if it you know potentially could do um, better, which I have not seen it uh, it do better. Um, you know coding a website from scratch 
uh, just puts you as the web designer uh, in complete control and takes it away uh, essentially from the business owner. Uh, and that's something that I don't like to do. You know, part of everything that we do is make it as easy as possible. So, cause I understand like you're likely never going to not going to work with me forever. Right. You know, this is a, a business relationship. Hopefully I earn and build your trust as, as a business owner. Uh, but at some point, something's going to happen. You're not going to work with me for 40 years. I need to train and empower you to know how to do this as easily as possible uh, as well. And by, you know, coding a website from scratch, that's just taking away from you. That's not empowering you. That's my answer on that. Gotcha. What, is the, what is the importance of a uh, quote unquote sexy website versus a functional one? Like, what do you, what do you recommend? Um, because I think... Uh, I personally, when it comes to a website, like I want it to have some sizzle to it, right? I mean, obviously yeah. video is important, yeah. uh, but at the end of the day, when you start to get technical on these things and you talk about, you know, keywords and probably key phrases and, you know, this, you use all these technical jargon, what is most important to actually ranking? I imagine the algorithms or the, or the, the computers aren't ranking you on sexiness, if I had to guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, user intent. Uh, at the, th this is the strategy that's going to outrule and outweigh any sort of update that Google ever has. This is how you beat algorithm updates is by focusing on the user intent, optimizing for people, not for robots. Uh, this goes for YouTube. This goes for uh, Google SEO, everything. Focus on the searcher's intent because e even as our uh, search um, switches from manually typing stuff into voice search, uh, this is even more uh, growing in importance, is to focus on the, the searcher's intent. What are they most interested in finding? What information can you present to them that is going to be the end-all, be-all resource for what they're typing in? That's, that's what it gets down to. You, know, you can add all the fancy stuff. Um, you can have you know, fun you know, animated sections throughout your website and stuff. But at the end of the day, create a resource that's really helpful for, for them and make it as easy as possible for them to reach out to you. You know, that's one thing that when I do website audits and stuff, drive me crazy. Uh, looking at home pages that there's no contact button uh, anywhere at the top. Uh, you know, you have to scroll down to the page, you know, scroll below the fold, it's called, um, to actually get in touch with them. Or there's nothing on the home page and they have to click over to the contact page and fill out a form. You know, make it as easy as possible. Uh, for them to reach you. That's, that's your goal is not to just to rank on Google, um, but to get them to, to reach out to you. So some of the, some of the old hacks that we used to do, which I don't think are so relevant these days are link backs and sharing links and everything. I think they've cracked down on that, but having a website with inside of a website. So basically you could have a features page and that's whatever.com. And then you have your main page. But having that feature page folded into your main page, does that still help? Do you know what I'm talking about there? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about, but like, you know, like having like your website.com slash real estate agent in Los Angeles, California is still beneficial because you want to rank individual pages for individual search terms. Um, so, you know, having a one page website is not ideal. Uh, you want to have multi, you know, pages, you know, you're, you have your main home page, but then have, you know, services, frequently asked questions, product pages, et cetera, as menu drop downs into other pages. Mm -hmm. That's going to help you. Um, and having keywords on every one of those. Cause we used to, we used to take like a real estate website, uh, you know, Con, you know, down on the bottom, very little townhouse for sale, bed for New Hampshire, homes for sale, bed for New Hampshire. Yeah. You know, that's, that's called keyword stuffing. And that's, that's, a thing of the past so that yeah, okay really so a lot of people out there doing that stop it <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, if you want to have uh longevity uh stay away from that stuff you might see short-term results but you know as soon as google finds your website they're going to de-index you and that's the worst possible thing yeah. is to, you know get get all of these results and you know there's spammy backlinks right i think you touched upon backlinks which we can kind of get into backlinks still work but um not all backlinks are created equal, um, but uh, nothing nothing is worse than actually seeing a consistent uh, ride and wave of success. And you have all this money coming in, and you've hired more people, and you've you know increased your uh, the size of your office and all this stuff. 
uh, because all of these leads are coming in from Google, but because you did all these black hat SEO strategies, eventually it's going to catch up with you and your website is going to go from a uh, constant up to tanking. And then you're like, oh my God, every, my business just dropped off the face of the earth. What's happening? So, so everybody, when that person calls you and says, I can get you on the first page of Google, you might not want to talk to that person right then. You want to get to validate sure. these things because people are still trying to sell those old hat Hat, old hat techniques and they'll harm you they definitely will yeah it's yeah. interesting that but that applies to everything too i mean it's like the in every shortcut is never a long-term sustainable Absolutely. plan no. it just doesn't work no. i like yeah that. the, the it, core the, sorry to cut you off there the core thing in in uh in marketing in general is building that no like and trust factor um you know and staying consistent with that you know showing up consistently they're going to know you um providing education and, and showcasing your personality that's another reason um, why I love video as well. They're going to like you and providing education, uh, and however that means, you know, video creating, uh, educational blog resources, they're going to trust you and then they're going to reach out to you for help. Yeah. What do you see out there right now? I know we're talking about websites and I'm going to deviate a little bit, but it still has websites in it. But if you take something like an active campaign, I don't know if you're familiar with that active campaign can actually track what you're doing on the website, what the users are doing on the website and respond as a result based upon their behavior on the particular website. Is that a thing that you think is going to continue to improve that way? Or do you think um, privacy laws, those types of things might have an impact on that? Yeah, it, it could. So I'm, I'm not uh, especially experienced with, with that uh, software that you brought up, but in the EU, for instance, there's specific privacy privacy laws against cookies, and um, they're even stricter with building email lists than we are here in the United States. Mm. So, of course, it could go away. Um, yeah. You know, nothing nothing is is definite, but you know, just do your best to uh, you know. Re I don't think retargeting is ever going to go away. Um, yeah. It could crack down on it, and they could get stricter, but I don't think anytime soon. Yeah. Okay. So then what's, so then what's next now that you brought it up? I mean, you're uh, a guru. What's next? What's coming after retargeting? Well, continue on education. Um, it's a, it's a great question. You know, uh, voice, uh, voice is still on the up and up, you know, focusing on vocal, uh, on yeah, vocal search. Um, you know, search engines related to Siri and um, and Google and, you know, Samsung has their own uh, Amazon's uh, um, Alexa, of course, mm -hmm. um, you know, focusing on uh, on voice search. I saw some interesting things recently in the in the VR space as well. Facebook's um, tapping into the business sector of virtual reality. Uh, so virtual workspaces. Uh, so having that on the back burner as well as how how can you get into um the vr space is potentially really interesting as well you know as a, a real estate agent can you do 360 tours and mapping of uh of, you know houses and and whatnot uh that people can actually step inside that's potentially something that's really cool and vr by the way virtual reality correct i don't yes want to oh yeah yeah sorry virtual means. reality yeah so i see jeff sweating over there a little bit i, I know he's getting anxious and he wants to bring it up <laughs> And we're about half hour, halfway into this or half hour into it. Let, let's bring it up, man, because you're doing some fantastic things on the TT Thank you. talk. So let, let, let's hear, let's hear your spin from somebody, you know, and here's the thing, guys, hopefully you take this with a grain of salt. You know, we all that you get to see every day in lab code agents, we're, we all got 18 other things we're doing too. So our TikTok presence, our YouTube presence, our whatever presence is part time. Right. We don't have full time to jump in, dedicate and have a team to actually go all the way in. Maybe you do. But this is what Austin does. So it's going to be really good to hear some things uh, that you're going to share with us um, in that space and how a guru, guru can give us some advice in that area. And but before before you answer that question, too, I want to point out what he did say, which and I'm, I'm going to tease Johnny here because uh, Johnny always likes to take a stab and say it's all about dancing and being goofy. And 
if I heard you correctly, yeah, like, yeah, it's very good, John. I like that. Um, if if I heard you correctly, you are kind of doing a Gary V style of content on TikTok, correct? Yeah, I, I have uh, maybe danced once <laughs> in uh, in maybe close to four or five hundred videos on there. So you don't you don't need to dance. And in fact, I follow a couple real estate agents on TikTok uh, that are crushing it on there. Uh, particularly in uh, in New York City, so the uh, I can kind of get into that and and talk about some of the things that they're doing that I find very interesting and fascinating. Uh, if if you want, I think it'd be you know very applicable. Uh, Bro, it's a free runway. <laughs> and and one more one more question before you: How long no. have you been on it? When did you start? Because I've been preaching it for over a year now, well before people knew what it was. I'm always curious to hear when people adopted and how long you've been on it. So I've been on it for uh, about a year. Um, I, I'm glad you brought up, you know, the Gary V thing. I really first heard about it in, in Crushing It here, uh, where he, you know, talks about it and talks about these opportunities. I am a Gary V fan. Um, wherever there's a, yeah, so I won't digress there, but I've been on it about a year. And the first seven, eight months was just observing you know, maybe creating a random video here and there and, you know, testing it, testing out different functionality and the, you know, filters they have and how to add songs and music and all that stuff, but no real traction. And eventually I started to um, create a bunch of content, you know, uh, not all of it was business focused. I still tried to, you know, see what worked, try and, you know, jump on trends. Um, and I create, you know, occasionally I would do like a business tutorial or, or something like that. And I never had any traction. Um, so, you know, for seven, six, seven, eight months, uh, I got like up to 300 followers, you know, not, not, nothing much at all. And I just had like, you know, a little epiphany one day, or maybe I was just sick and tired of, uh, of you know, trying to jump on trends or anything like that. And I said, you know, what? I'm just going to test this out as a business tool. I'm only going to create business tutorials. I'm going to dedicate like a month uh, every day. Uh, to creating only educational business oriented uh, tips and tutorials and see what happens. Uh, and almost like two days later, uh, this is like five videos in, uh, a video took off and got like 200,000 views or something like that. And that got me up to like four or 5,000 followers on the platform. So I was like, wow. whoa, wow. I see, I see momentum here. You know, uh, no other platform that I've ever been on has seen this fast of growth. Well, what did you do differently? Did was it a hashtag? Was it a title? Was it what was the part that made it optimal to do that? Do you think? I just um, so tick, how TikTok's algorithm works is it it learns based on what type of content that you create. So the core thing that I want to focus on is if you're getting on TikTok and want to use it as a business tool, focus on one core niche, one core uh, area or or industry because that tells TikTok who to serve your content in front of more people. So I had just started creating business content, business content, business content, and it started putting me in front of people interested in business content. It's fascinating. So just, yeah, double carry down on digital marketing stuff. Carry on, carry on. So, so, so the progression, oh. so it started, it started slowly, yeah. which is great for people to hear. Like not everybody just takes off like that. Uh, and then you gradually, and then you, you, you hit it big, which is typical. We hear that all the time. You gained a bunch of followers. Then what, what happened next? I, I doubled down. I started, I kept doing it. I started uploading uh, three, four videos uh, every single day, uh, which is, you know, sounds intimidating, but um, the type of content that um, I create is, is very simple because it's just, you know, there's a million things going on in my head. I've been doing this for you know 15 years. Like I said, uh, I can... I could do this podcast with you for six hours if you wanted to, uh, with just mo so much, so much stuff. So I just, you know, it's just easy to pull the phone out, but you could also just batch your content. Um, and it, it was consistent growth, you know, like a hundred followers a week, 200 followers a week here and there. It kept, uh, it kept growing. One video would, would do consistently better than the other. I was still experimenting, uh, at that time with, um, different stuff like YouTube tutorials and, um, uh, Facebook tutorials and Pinterest and SEO uh, and all all types of different stuff. And then eventually a video really took off in the SEO space. And I was talking about alt text on uh, on images, which, you know, is a SEO factor for 
uh, helping increase the SEO of, of an individual page. And that video took off. Uh, it did like, it's at like 1.5 million views or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that video uh, brought in like 20 or 30,000 new followers uh, just from that one video. So I said, okay, SEO, I'm going to, you know, pivot or uh, uh, hone in from just doing digital marketing into doing almost only SEO. And I still throw out other uh, business oriented content, but now like 75, 80% of what I do is in the SEO space. Um, how I leverage that viral video, I got like four hundreds of comments on there. I responded to every single comment uh, and I did like 50 or 60 video responses. So one of the things that you can do on TikTok is not just type a response, but do a video response to a, con uh, a comment. And going back to what I said earlier about building and nurturing your know, like, and trust, that's exactly what you're doing. So you're, you're nurturing the people that saw this one-time viral hit and you're bringing them in because you're talking to them, you're answering them, and you're showcasing that you're an expert in this space. Uh, and that's, you know, that's really where I've been. So I'm at like 66,000 followers on there right now. Uh, we can get into some specifics of how much money I've actually generated from TikTok. Uh, if you want, I don't want to be, you know, too braggy or anything, but. Sure. Before well, you do, though, let me ask yeah. you a quick question. Yeah, yeah. You said you're uploading videos. And I think, I think. Um, no, I'm, re I'm recording them through the app directly. Okay. Is there. Is there a difference that you've ever seen between uploading and recording? Yeah, uploading um, takes a lot more time. You got to edit it. Um, you know, no, but, but but from a performance standpoint, because I do both. Like I'll sometimes just, you know, instinct has me grab my camera. Sometimes instinct has me grab TikTok, right? But sometimes mm -hmm. I just I'm recording my daughter or something, and I'm like, oh, that make a good TikTok, and then I just put it into TikTok, right? Yeah. So. I have, I, I would say that recording the videos I have seen better results from. I'm a little lazy uh, and I don't want to edit my own videos, but uh, I have a client that we completely operate his, his TikTok channel for. He's a, um, an addiction doctor. Uh, we got his channel up to, uh, I think he's just about hit 50,000 as of the start of this recording, 50,000 followers. All of those are pre-recorded. So we record those on a phone. Um, he then, uh, my video production guy sends me those, uh, those video recordings. Uh, I manually upload them onto the app, uh, and post them that way. And his videos do exceptionally well. Now it's a How completely different niche. Hmm? 30 seconds, 15 seconds, a minute. What do they get? They're typically, his are typically in the 30 second range. Mine tend to be a little longer cause it's hard to distill how to do SEO in less than 60 seconds. Yeah. Uh, but I, but I do my best. So his, his tend to be a little shorter and we have a different I, delivery style as well. I love that. First of all, Johnny just got excited because your cat showed up into the frame. I, I noticed that uh, he did get excited. Oh, ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. That, that's authenticity right there, brother. Um, I, what I love about it and, and we can get off the TikTok. I actually want to hear you talk about how, you know, the, the monetization part of it, how it relates to SEO. But the thing I do love about it because my content is similar in the sense that in the old world, I would have been speaking for two or three minutes doing a live video or doing a recorded video. Now I've learned how to tighten it up and do jump cuts and put it into less than 60 seconds, which I think my audience actually prefers anyway, because I'm getting it all in. And I'm, I'm sure you're finding the same thing. That's one of the things I love about TikTok. Yeah, it's, you know, once you put in the time and, and learn the platform, it, it just becomes so intuitive. Uh, and after testing what works and what resonates with your audience, uh, it, it's just so easy to do those jump cuts that work really well on YouTube. Uh, but you know, it, it's literally as simple as pressing record, stopping, pressing record again. Yeah. Like, so simple. It actually makes shooting videos easier in my opinion, because yeah. I can break yeah. them down into one sentence at a, one sentence at a time. It's amazing. Absolutely. I love it. So, so let's, let's hear about the monetization piece of it and how it kind of relates back to SEO. And then we have a really good question in the, in the chat as well that I want to get to. Yeah. I'm happy to answer any questions. So, uh, I've monetized my channel through several different ways. Um, the, 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 we'll start with the lowest, uh, and, and work up to the, uh, the highest, right? Uh, the lowest is probably the uh, TikTok monetization program. Uh, so once you hit, uh, I think it's 10,000 followers and I think it's 100,000 views, 
uh, in 28 days or something like that, you're eligible to monetize uh, your page. And that is nothing. I think I get like uh, 30 cents a day or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it's nothing. The second way is by actually going live and providing value. Uh, people will uh, send you gifts and sometimes that can be fairly lucrative uh, as well. Um, I have a funnel uh, on my page typically. So I offer a free uh, SEO checklist uh, in exchange for their email. So I build my email list. I then upsell them a $99 website audit. That funnel has done extremely well. Uh, from providing that, that funnel or providing that website audit, uh, that translates into uh, clients. Uh, so I've gotten individual clients for mostly SEO, sometimes TikTok and pay-per-click management and all that stuff, um, just from them reaching out, watching my videos and sending me an email or sending me a private message on there. But the, the funnel and website audit actually translates into clients as well. So that's the fourth strategy is actually getting high paying clients. Uh, from from TikTok has worked extremely well. I think we've gotten eight or nine clients uh, just from doing this for SEO so far. And then the highest is consulting, uh, which I, I love these consulting jobs because it's uh, the most amount of money for the least amount of work. Uh, because I just, you know, they have internal teams. They're, you know, somewhat large businesses or corporations or something uh, that already have teams. They just don't have a strategy in place and rather than hire us to do the work for them, they just want me to either tell their internal staff what to do or audit their existing marketing company, uh, which is another really funny um, consulting job that I got. They, they brought me in to oversee what another marketing company is doing and they're you know, paying me a lot of money. So those consulting jobs uh, do a, a lot. And um, just to wrap this up in the, in the past four months, I just crossed the $50,000 mark exclusively from TikTok. And I think that's awesome. Wow. I think that's pretty <laughs> awesome too, bro. <laughs> that's incredible. That's incredible. That's validating. I love it. Yeah. All right. So let's go back. Let me, uh, Keith Lucas has a question. Uh, going back to the SEO is a great question. Does retargeting, retargeting audiences who have been to your site or landing page that follow the retarget link back to your site help or hurt SEO? Do that and I'm going to say that again, or do you got it? Um, I, I don't, I don't think bringing them, well, um, I think it would likely help. I don't know if there's a direct correlation as, as far as SEO. So, you know, when you, when you think of SEO, it's, it's impacting your rankings within Google search, uh, for a particular page, you know, your goal is to get on the first page into the top, the first, first page, social signals do impact uh, positively uh, SEO rankings. Google does look at uh, uh, viral signals essentially. So if you're bringing people back from Facebook or you're retargeting them on Google or YouTube uh, or any other, uh, you know, if you're doing uh, search partner display ads or anything like that, when you're bringing traffic in, I think it, it, it could, um, I don't think it, per, uh, it there's a direct correlation that it's going to be a, a huge ranking factor for a particular page. I think it's a good idea just to bring relevant traffic back to your site from a business perspective. I don't, you know, just in general, I, I think it does help you as a business. I don't know if there's any direct correlation between, in, between retargeting and increasing uh, an individual pages ranking on Google search. Good answer. I, I would agree. So basically, retargeting is smart for your business, but doesn't probably have any bearing on your, I, your ranking. I don't. I don't think so. Uh, Google has said, and they they want to, you know, they say, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but they they say they want to keep advertising um, separate from organic SEO. So there should not be a direct correlation because Google does not want it to be a pay-to-play platform as far as organic SEO. They want to present the best possible resource for the searcher. Meanwhile, pay-per-click is definitely pay-to-play. Got it. Now, search engine optimization is predominantly, when we talk about it, is predominantly Google, right? I mean, there's other things out there, like my favorite, DuckDuckGo. But, um, you know, Yahoo, Bing, all those things. I mean, you can still rank in them, but is there any benefit to focusing on them or just stay focused on Google? 
Google uh, is going to be like 95% of your SEO traffic coming in. Uh, and what I found is if you're optimizing for Google, uh, you know, DuckDuckGo, Bing, Yahoo, any other search engine is likely going to index you as well because they're very similar signals. You know, their algorithm might be slightly different, but the goal of any search engine is to serve content for what the searcher is looking for. And if you create content around what the searcher is looking for, you're going to reach them. Yeah, for sure. I love it. I, I, I feel like we keep going back to FAQ. You know, it's frequently asked questions. Frequently, yeah, FAQ, FAQ. Content for FAQ is powerful. Like give them, give them what they want, not what you think they want. So what is, start jotting down the questions that your clients are asking you throughout your transactions. Yeah. Keep a log and then go create a bunch of video content answering those questions that you then can multi-purpose into blogs. I mean, that alone was a powerful nugget, I think, for everyone on this. Uh, on this it's one. huge. And he also said Neil Patel's Uber Suggest, which I use. Uh, I don't, you know, you get the free version, you get to do like four lookups a day, maybe three. You know, it's worth the 50 bucks a month to have if you're going to do anything of significance. Uh, you also have keywords anyway, which is short money. These, mm -hmm. the, you know, a lot of people will just post something or create something without doing the research to it because it's what they want. And it really doesn't matter what you want. It matters what the consumer wants first and foremost and forever. But why are people going to search engine to, to the search engine, to the search bar? Why are they going to YouTube? How to, you know, they're looking for a, an answer to a question. So that's how important frequently asked questions are, because if you can get down to the top five most answered questions in your niche or whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can really dominate just by th answering those five main questions because the, the ranking is going to look, hey, this guy's already answered that question, right? Hey, here's a great in-depth answer. Hey, this person has had a thousand people on his site in the past two months looking for that, you know, and they spent 33 seconds, four minutes, three minutes. They had four, you know, they start to look at the heat map. How important is that? Austin, uh, the click-through rate on websites and how, how many clicks they're making and how deep they're going. That, that ranks, doesn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Click-through rate uh, is, a, is a huge ranking factor. And in fact, this um, takes me back to uh, an experiment that I forget his name, uh, the head of uh, Moz, um, really iconic SEO guy. I can't, I can't think of his name offhand. Call him Jimmy. Uh, what's that? We'll call him Jimmy. Jimmy, yeah, um, the the head guy from uh, from Moz um, did a social experiment on this. He um, he had this experiment. He did this a couple of years ago. Um, he tweeted out uh, a website page and he he told his audience of you know a couple hundred thousand people. He said, "I want to do a quick experiment. I want you to type in this exact search phrase into Google. I want you to click on my website." I want to see if this is going to increase my uh, ranking in Google and how fast that it's going to do so. And it, it jumped up his ranking from like position six to position two. So there's a direct correlation between uh, searcher's intent and click through rate. Uh, also time spent on site. So not only just getting them to click, but getting them to stick around and stay around uh, for a while. And going to different pages as well. You know, going multiple pages deep into your website. I think that's something you also had mentioned. Um, you want to avoid at all costs them leaving your site as soon as they get on. Keep them on your website. Yeah, absolutely. And I could talk all day about this stuff because I live and breathe trying to learn about it like everybody else. But I've been down the rabbit hole for many years with it. And um, <laughs> man, I tell you, we could talk about it all day long, but we don't have all day. So, yeah. What so which, which is a which is a great segue, Johnny. And to uh, Austin, how can our audience, first of all, do you have any closing thoughts, but then also how can our audience find you, get a hold of you? They want to reach out to you, work, work, and where's the best place to do so? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I know we're wrapping up, but if there's any final questions, anybody has any in here, I'm, I'm happy to answer them at the tail end if there's any good ones. But uh, yeah, if you want to reach out, you want to shoot me any follow-up clarifying questions on anything, you can reach me, Austin at socialtypro.com. Uh, my website is socialtypro.com. You can find me Socialty Pro across every social media platform. If you want to find me on TikTok and see what that's all about, check me out on there too. Socialty Pro on all of the platforms. I love it. I love it. Any closing thoughts for realtors? So they've sat and listened to this. They know they need it. 
um, you know, where, sh where should they go? Should they, should they start with building a website? Should they start with, um, you know, creating the content? Well, where should they start? The most important thing here is to take action. Uh, do anything you can, just get started. Um, you know, when you view a podcast like this or you go to a conference or anything, a lot of people go into that conference brain or paralysis by analysis. And there's so many things that they want to do. You know, start with, start with one thing. Start with outlining those top 25 frequently asked questions. Uh, and then start, you know, scheduling out. Pick one day a month and knock out as much video content as you can around those frequently asked questions. Uh, and then transcribe those uh, those videos. That's the easiest, fastest way to get started. I love it, man. This has been great. Johnny, any uh, any parting thoughts, my friend? No, he um, oh, really opened up my eyes and I hope everybody can take, and you just closed with that. You take that, you take that, what do they call it, a CRT file? Is that what SRT. you do? That, what is it? SRT. The SRT file, make a blog with it. And when you're talking in your videos, talk keyword, keyword strong, keyword rich, because that's going to help. But then now you got a video, you got this, and just give it time. And I, and I really am glad that you said about the TikTok taking time, nothing, 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 nothing. Then all of a sudden it took off. Y'all, it takes time. And I know we live in an instantaneous world now, and we want instant gratification, but it takes time. So have patience, stay consistent, fight the resilience, not the resilience, the um, the pushback, whatever you call that thing, right? The, the resistance. 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 Yeah, fight the resistance to not want to do it. He's uploading four or five videos a day. You got to do the work if you want the results. I love That's it, man. So, so Social T Pro, go check them out on whichever platform you like to spend your time or the website. Austin, this has been great. We appreciate having you on and uh, I hope to do it again sometime. I appreciate it. Uh, I hope everybody took value from this. I'm happy to join in again anytime. Awesome. Thanks, fellas. Thank you. Peace. I sent you a message too, Austin, through your website. I don't know. Oh, how cool. to... Yeah, I got to stop broadcasting this thing. All right. I guess we're done. Stop live streaming. <laughs> All right. I got to leave. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, man, yeah, I sent you a message. Let's connect, grab a Zoom, and uh, interested to show you what we're doing and get see, see where we can put it together. Definitely. Looking forward to it, man. Cool. Yeah. Peace out. Bye.